Hey guys, welcome back to Think Making. I'm Anton and today I'll show you how to set up the new Prusa Steel Black Edition MK2 by Orbital Printing. So let's get to it. Okay, just to make this clear from the very start, this is not a review. I will be releasing that after I test the printer more extensively, but right now I'll show you how to build the printer itself. So this is a Prusa Steel Black Edition MK2 by Orbital Printing. It is a more rigid and solid take on the original Prusa MK2, making all the frame out of solid metal sheets. You still get all the cool features like an MK42 heated bed, auto bed leveling, solder electronics, but at a lower cost. So let's get started. Everything came properly packaged, boxes inside boxes, foam, and other soft materials to keep everything intact during shipping. And this is a DIY kit, so there's a ton of components inside the box. I suggest you lay out everything nicely and go through the checklist to make sure you got everything. Then proceed to clearing out your work area because building this printer will take a while and you're better off keeping everything nice and tidy. So let's start off with the three largest pieces of the frame. Insert the two support structures on each side and secure them with a couple of screws. These are nylock knots, so the printer's vibrations will never loosen them over time. Now get these two pieces and insert them in the intersection between the square frame and the support. These make the printer square and strong, so make sure you screw them tightly. When done, set what you've built aside. Next, you'll need one of these long plates, the Y-axis idlers, a pulley, and a screw with a couple of washers. Insert the two idlers and screw them in firmly. Then, place a pulley sandwiched between two washers between the two pieces and secure them with a screw and a nut. It should look like this. Orientation matters, so make sure it is just like this. Set this aside. Then, get the other long plate the Y motor mounts, the Y motor, a pulley, standoffs, and some screws. Start by fixing the pulley to the motor shaft in this orientation. Then place one of the motor mounts over the motor, then some standoffs, and again sandwich it all together with the other motor mount. Fix it all together using four screws, then place two screws with nuts in the center holes of the long plate, and slide the Y motor with the mount on them, and then tighten the screws. Set this aside. Now you'll need four polymer bearings, the Y carriage, this pieces that hold the bearings, and these that will secure the belts. This section is very simple. The bearings go along the four cuts made on both sides of the carriage and are secured by the pieces with half a circle cut in them. The other two go in the center and will then hold the belts. Each of the pieces is held with two screws, so you'll need a ton of them in this step. It should end up looking like these. Now get the medium length rods and push them through each of the bearings. Set this aside. This is what you should have so far. Looking good, right? Now get the plate with the motor and screw it to the back of the printer. Then get the Y carriage and push the rods through the top holes in the back plate. Then secure the front with the plate that has the Y idler. Make sure to screw everything nice and tight and that your Y carriage moves smoothly. It's looking a lot more like a 3D printer, right? Well, now flip it over. Insert one of the belts in one of the belt holders of the carriage. Loop it through the Y motor's pulley, then through the Y idler and back. Fix it to the other belt holder, but make sure your belt is tight. If necessary, you can add a belt tensioner. Now you'll want to install the Y end stop but you'll first need to secure this to the 3D printed part. Then you'll be able to screw it to the frame, just next to the Y motor. Just make sure that the polymer bearing hits the end stop. Next, you'll need the longest rods, the X motor mount, the drag chain holder, the other end of the X axis, the lead screw nuts, more polymer bearings, a pulley, and some bolts and nuts. Start off by inserting the bearings on the 3D printed pieces. Then insert the nuts that will hold the lead screw nuts in place. These might require some force. Then insert the polymer nuts and screw them in. 
Then insert one of the large nuts into the X axis end. Next insert the large bolt in the X tensioner, insert it into the X axis end and secure it with two more nuts. Then put the pulley inside the tensioner and fix it with a screw. Next you'll want to install the X axis end stop. This one screws directly to the bottom of the X axis motor mount. Also attach the wires to each of its ends. There is no polarity so it doesn't matter which is positive or negative. Now put the drag chain holder over the X motor mount, that over the motor and fix it all together using 4 screws. Then drop in a pulley on the motor shaft and lock it by tightening the screws. Now the X carriage. Start off by fixing the drag chain mounts using a screw. Then push zip ties through each of the 6 sets of holes in the carriage, dropping the polymer bearings and tightening the zip ties. Easy peasy. Now put it all together. Insert the rods through the X motor mount, then insert the X carriage through the rods and finally cap it off with the other end of the X axis. Twisting the rods tends to help pushing them in. At the end you should get this. Set it aside. Now you'll need these triangular pieces and the Z motor mounts. Attach two of the triangular pieces to the motor mount and screw it tightly. Do this for both mounts. Next you'll need to fix them to the printer's frame. Make sure that the small hole is looking towards the outside of the frame. Do this for both sides. Now get the two Z axis motors. The one with the short cable goes on the left side. Tilt the printer and insert the lead screw first through the large hole in the mount. Also push the motor's cable through the hole in the frame for better cable management. Then secure the motor to the motor mount using 4 screws. Do this on both sides. Next insert the remaining smooth rods on each of the smaller holes of the Z motor mounts. This is where you'll need the X axis that you built earlier. Carefully insert the rods through it. If assembled to the proper length, it should drop easily and hit the lead screws. Then trim both lead screws simultaneously for them to get a hold on the X axis. All of our axes are now in place, but we still need to secure them. To do that, use this piece over each side of the Z axis. It will hold the smooth rod and the lead screw in place. Then push one of these bearings around the lead screw and secure it lightly with the screw. Now fix these two pieces to the back of the frame with a couple of screws and place the threaded rod with the two large knots on the groove. This will be the filament spool holder. Then feed the other belt through the X motor and the Y idler. The belt should be secured to the back of the X carriage using some zip ties. Make sure the belt is tight and then clip the excess belt. Again use the belt tensioner if it is not tight enough. Now let's build the extruder assembly. These are a ton of pieces. Start off by inserting nuts in this 3D printed piece. Then secure the drive gear to the extruder's motor. Then attach the motor to the 3D printed piece using two screws and adjust the position of the gear to line up with the filament feeding hole. It should look like this. Now attach this lever which will press on the filament. It should be able to move freely. Then put the small threaded rod through the bearing and put it in the lever. Now the hot end. First screw in the nozzle to the heating block all the way in and then 3 quarters of a turn back. Now screw in the heat sink tightly as it is not easily accessible later. Then insert the heater cartridge and secure it with a screw. Then insert the thermistor and secure it lightly as it is more fragile. Then insert a small collet on the feeding hole of the hot end and push some PTFE to wing all the way to the end. Then insert the hot end in the extruder assembly. Notice that you'll have to cut the tubing to get a perfect fit. Then put some nuts in the hot end cover. Place it over the extruder assembly and secure it with some screws. Now attach the hot end cooling fan to the assembly with the cable facing the motor. Then drop in some nuts through some holes in the top of the assembly and hold the lever using a screw with a spring and a washer to press the pulley against the gear. Then insert the capacitive probe into the holder and secure it with two screws approximately 2 mm above the nozzle. Now secure the blower fan with the exhaust directed towards the bottom. 
Finally, attach a fan duct to the bottom of the assembly with a single screw and set it aside. To build the screen, start by fixing these two pieces to the plastic cover of the screen. Then, drop in four nuts and add standoffs in the back. Then, drop in the screen and secure it using nuts. Then, attach the ribbon cables to the screen. Finally, get this whole assembly and fix it to the front of the 3D printer using a couple of screws. Now the heated bed. Attach the thermistor using captain tape to the bottom center of the bed and route it to the corner where the other cables are soldered. Then, sleeve the power and thermistor's cable. Then, cover the corner where the power cables are attached using this 3D printed cable saver and zip tie the sleeved cables to it. Then add conical screws through the top of each of the holes in the bed and attach the brass standoffs on the bottom of each. The bed is now ready to be fixed to the Y carriage using screws between the carriage and the end of each of the standoffs. Now comes the electronics. For this, I also suggest you check out the wiring diagrams in Orbital Printing's website. Just to make sure you've got everything right. You will be wiring mains voltage, so be careful. So first comes the power. Start by screwing the power plug to this 3D printed piece. Then add two positive and two negative cables on the 12 volt rails which will power the printer. And connect the plug to the ground, neutral and the live lines in the power supply. Then try to sandwich the cables between these two 3D printed parts while routing the power cables out through the corner. You should then be able to screw them together. Then. Push the power supply in and secure the printed parts to the power supply with some screws on the sides. Then fix the power supply to one of the right support structures of the 3D printer using two screws. Then fix the electronics box along with the controller to the other support structure using four screws. Before wiring anything, add heat sinks to the drivers. Then attach the extruder assembly to the X carriage using two screws. See the hundreds of cables all over the printer? Well, now you need to route them to the electronics box in the neatest way possible. The x-axis has a drag chain that will make this a lot easier. This is how it should be. All cables in the X carriage go through the chain. Then join the motor and end stub cable and continue sleeved to the box. The LCD ribbon cables are held with zip ties along the frame of the printer and then under the Z motors. The right Z motor and sleeved power cables run side by side along with the Y motor and end sub cables as they meet in the box. The heated bed runs sleeved cables straight to the box. Now you can connect everything. The power cables and the hot end fan should be connected to the four bottom terminals. The heated bed cables go right above those in the D9 pins and the hot end heater should go in the top D10 pins. The blower fan is connected to the upper left corner. Then you should connect the end stops, whose pins are marked in red, and the thermistors, whose pins are marked in yellow above the end stops. Then connect the motors. Each connection and cable are labeled, so just match them together. Also make sure that the red cable always goes to the left side. Finally, attach the LCD ribbon cables to the controller and close up the electronics box using some screws. We are almost there. Just wipe the bed using some alcohol so the PEI sheet sticks better and slowly apply the sheet to the bed, starting from one side and pushing your way through to the other to prevent bubbles from forming. The PEI sheet is larger than the bed, so just cut off the excess. Finally, connect the power cable to the printer and hit that switch. Hopefully you did everything right and the printer boots up correctly. Check if there are any updates, if not, run a calibration file and then get on to your first print. Hey, 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 wait, wait, wait. Printing videos are for the full review next week, but I can tell you I'm really liking what I'm seeing out of this printer. Right now, just look at how nice this printer looks and how neatly the wiring can be done.
Okay, before I wrap up this video, there are links down in the description to the official instructions on how to build this kit and to Orbella Printing's website. You can buy this printer as a whole kit, just like you saw in the video, or only the frame to upgrade an existing Prusa MK2. I have been using this printer for some days, and by next week I should be able to tell you what I think about it after spending some real printing time with it. So stay tuned for that. Well guys, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, and if you enjoyed it, go ahead and smash that like button. And if you loved it, consider supporting me through Patreon or by buying a cool t-shirt in my merch store. And if you don't want to miss any of my videos, don't forget to subscribe and click on that bell icon to receive notifications on new uploads. And if you're wondering what to watch next, check out this videos. Again guys, thanks for watching and see you in the next one.